are your eyes? Ah, better. But that's not actually what I mean. I'm talking about what you pay attention to as you go through your day. Do you see that candy wrapper on the sidewalk? The dishwasher that needs to be unloaded? What about the toy lying in the middle of the floor that someone is definitely gonna trip over? Do your eyes pay attention to the kid playing alone on the playground? Or your older neighbor trying to wheel her trash bin up the driveway? All around you, there are things that need to be done, just waiting for someone to step up. And that someone can be you. When you see that piece of trash, toss it in the can. Take that silverware and slide it in the drawer. Pick up that toy and put it away. Invite that kid to join your kickball team and offer to help your neighbor get her rolling bin back to the house. When you see a need and you make a move to take care of it, that's initiative. It's a great way to show love to the people around you. When you see what needs to be done and do it, others can see God at work in you. That's why initiative is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Help me God to see what you see. You are doing a great work in me. I've decided I can stand still. No, you have given me purpose All my, all my heart is yours All my, all my life is yours I will, I will make a move for you For you All my, all my heart is yours
turn to you You are my help when I need wisdom You always see me through To know that you're chasing after me it makes me want to run to where you are God, you make this journey worth it I give you all my heart When I don't know what to do Jacob. Oh, there it is. That's how I, nope, that's not it, Jacob. Okay, okay. Nope, it's back on again. Okay. <laughs> and I am ready for launch. I mean, not really. I don't actually have a rocket or anything, but I am ready for initiative. Initiative is seeing what needs to be done and doing it. Astronauts are really great at showing initiative. When they see what needs to be done, they don't just ignore it. They do something about it. They even have this thing they do before every launch. It's called a status check. And it works like this. Rocket fuel, check. Oh. Rocket fuel is a go. Red switchy thing, check. Red switchy thing. Uh, red switchy thing is a go. Power thrusters, check. Power thrusters. Power thrusters are a gross. I can't check, I can't check the power thrusters because somebody left a dirty sock here. Well, can you move 
the dirty sock? I mean, I could, yes, but it's not mine. I didn't leave it here. And so I don't think it's my job to move the sock. I suggest that we halt the launch until whoever left the sock here comes and gets it themselves. Copy that. Holding launch for a dirty sock. Good. Roger that. I wonder how long I'm gonna have to wait for someone to come get this sock. Probably gonna be here for a while. You know what? Today's story is about a guy who saw something that needed to be done, and he did something about it, even though it wasn't his responsibility. Sounds like a great guy. Will somebody come get this sock? It smells. Some people, am I right? Ugh. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Nehemiah, chapters 1 and 2. Over and over, the Israelites promised to be faithful to God. But over and over again, they turned away from Him. At last, God allowed enemy armies to take His people captive and carry them off to Babylon, nearly a thousand miles away. After 70 years, God allowed some of His people to return to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple. But back in Babylon, now part of Persia, the rest of the Jews had made lives for themselves. In fact, a Jew named Nehemiah had become quite important. Greetings. I am cupbearer to the king. A cupbearer was like a bodyguard who checked to make sure that no one poisoned the king's food or drink. Nehemiah was likely a trusted advisor. Your Majesty, may I suggest the date pudding? But though it was nearly 150 years since the Israelites had left Jerusalem, Nehemiah's heart was still in his homeland. When his brother Hanani returned from his trip to Judah, Nehemiah had a chance for some news. Brother, how are the people left in Jerusalem? Some are still alive, but they're having a hard time. Oh no. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down. The gates have been burned with fire. People are ashamed. That's terrible. A city without walls could never prosper. The people would always live in fear of being attacked. I'm sorry to bring such bad news. No, no. I'm glad you told me. This made Nehemiah sat down and wept. He couldn't even eat for several days. Instead, he poured his heart out to God. Lord, you are a great and wonderful God. See how your people are suffering. Please listen to me. I'm praying for the people of Israel. We Israelites have committed sins against you. We haven't obeyed the commands you gave to Moses. Nehemiah reminded God of the promise he made to his people. You said, if you people are not faithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me, I will bring you back. Lord, please pay careful attention to my prayer. Give me success when I bring my request to King Artaxerxes. For four whole months, Nehemiah prayed daily to God. He knew before taking action, he needed to listen and prepare. At last, he was ready. Your Majesty. Anyone who came before the king was supposed to appear happy. But for the first time, Nehemiah allowed his true feelings to show. Oh, why are you looking so sad? May you live forever? Why shouldn't I look sad? The city of my people has been destroyed and fire has burned up its gates. The king could have been annoyed and ordered Nehemiah to be punished, but God moved his heart. Well, what do you want? Nehemiah prayed silently for the right words. Send me to Judah. Let me go to the city of Jerusalem. I want to rebuild it. The king frowned and glanced over at the queen. At last he said, hmm. How long will your journey take? When will you get back? Precisely as many moons as are required? Fair enough. Dismissed. Nehemiah turned to leave, but he knew there was more he needed for the job. If it pleases you, 
May I take some letters with me? I want to give them to the governors west of the Euphrates River. Then they'll help me to travel safely. Mm, done. Oh, and a letter to the caretaker of the royal park? So he'll give me logs for the wall and gates and a house? <laughs> what next? A whole escort of army officers and horsemen? That would be fantastic. Fine. All of it. Get on with it. God had given Nehemiah such favor with the king that he had everything he needed for his long journey to Judah. At last, Nehemiah had reached the city he dreamt of his entire life. Jerusalem. Though Nehemiah was overjoyed by the first glimpse of the city, it must have been difficult to see its crumbling, broken down walls. So much work to be done. But Nehemiah didn't tell anyone his plan at first. On a bright moonlit night, Nehemiah snuck out with only a few others to see the full damage to the walls. We have to know what we're up against. Nehemiah traveled by donkey. With a few trusted friends, they left the city through the broken valley gate. Let's head toward the Jackal Well. At last, Nehemiah got a clear picture of the devastation. Jagged piles of rock lay everywhere. The gates were gone with scorched gaping holes in their place. It's such a big job. Only God can do this. Nehemiah circled what was left of the wall, heading up the Kidron Valley and at last returning through the valley gate. The next morning, he called together the priests and nobles and officials. You know I've come to visit my people in Jerusalem, but that's not the only reason I'm here. Nehemiah gestured to the jagged remains of the wall, visible from where they stood. You can see the trouble we're in. Jerusalem has been destroyed. Fire has burned up its gates. Tell us something new. Come on, let's rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. Then people won't be ashamed anymore. Hmm, well, I mean, I mean, that's something to consider if you think about this. Um, Our grandparents tried that years ago. But God has been helping me. He gave me favor with the king. He'll help us complete the work. So who's in? Well, me. I'm in. Me too. Let's start rebuilding. God moved the hearts of the people to help Nehemiah. And together, they began the gigantic job of repairing the walls and gates of Jerusalem. You ever see a piece of trash on the ground and just walk by without picking it up because you didn't put it there? Or maybe someone didn't clean up after themselves when dinner was over. Do you just leave the messy dishes lying around? Do you ignore someone else's dirty sock? A lot of people see what needs to be done, but then don't do it because it's not their job. It's not their responsibility, but showing initiative means getting things done, not waiting for someone else to do it. That's what Nehemiah did when he started rebuilding the wall around Jerusalem. It's what Jesus did too. When he saw a need, he did something about it. He healed people who needed healing. He taught people who needed to learn. And Jesus took care of our greatest need when he died on the cross for our sins. So, if you want to show initiative, don't just see what needs to be done, do something about it. Do a status check. Do you see any dirty dishes? Dirty dishes. Oh! Dirty dishes. Cleared away. Check. Do you see any trash? Water bottle. Recycled. Check. Do you see a dirty sock? Dirty socks cleared away, even though it's not my job. Check. Here's the one thing to remember today. Don't wait for someone else to do what needs to be done. Initiative takes a lot of work for sure, but it's worth it. It helps you, it helps other people, and it helps the world. And maybe, just maybe, it can help the universe. I'll see you next time.
Whoa! <laughs> yeah. Oh, Nelly! Hey, what you doing? Ah, I'm launching foot missiles. Oh, cool. Let me see. Watch this. All right. Oh! oh. <laughs> no, it barely launched. Hey, can I try? Yes, you can, actually. Yeah. Here, let me set this up for you. Thanks. All right. Okay. <laughs> right. We're clear to launch. Okay. Three, two, one. Hello everyone, I'm Brandon. And I'm John. And welcome to the So and So Show. John, John, we we have an amazing show today. That we do. Yeah. Yes, we do. But you, you should probably get rid of this big bag of trash before we get the show started. Yeah, well, I didn't put it there. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it's kind of it's kind of blocking the shot. So. Yeah, not my job. Why don't you throw it away? I didn't put it there either. Yeah, but it's closer to your side. Okay, no, it's not. Yes, it is. No, look, this is your basement. Yeah, but there's a trash can right beside you. So what? We're just gonna we're gonna do the show with this this giant bag of trash on the desk? I Is don't know, Brandon. Are we? So I am so excited about today's show. We have a huge guest, so big, someone that, quite frankly, I can't even believe she agreed to come on the show. But she <laughs> is here. Today. In this very room. <laughs> Should we tell them who it is? I don't think an introduction is necessary. I agree. Please welcome someone who knows stuff. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! Oh, wow. Come on in and have a seat. Yeah, come on in. Have a seat. Have a seat. <laughs> wow. We are so this happy is, to have you here. here on the show today. I am so happy to be here. <laughs> Look, I'm sure our viewers know who you are, uh, but just in case... Tell us who you are and what you know. People call me Miss Magnificent, <laughs> the one woman circus. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Tell us about some of your amazing acts. Well, why don't I just show you? Oh, oh that would be awesome. <laughs> I'll just put this right here. Wow. Okay, here <sighs> now, before we do anything, it's very important to stretch. <sighs> wow. Amazing. <laughs> How are you doing that? <sighs> I've never seen anyone do anything like that before. What? 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 It's like your head is spinning all the way around. What are you, an owl? <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's better. Okay, now for my very first act, I'm going to bring out oh, oh, man. my very, very good friend, <laughs> Frank. Whoa, is that a tarantula? <laughs> Oh, oh, wait, 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 come, come, he's crawling up your arm. I, 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 oh. oh, it's crawling on her neck. Oh, no, it's on your face. Oh, no. It's on your face. <laughs> you have a tarantula on your face. <laughs> okay, back in there, little <laughs> buddy. Okay, <laughs> now that Frank is back home safe and sound, I think it's time that we have some fun with swords. Whoa. <laughs> Oh, I think I'm going to need a little more room. How about over there? Yeah, sure. Come on. Right over here. Yeah, right over here, sure. Great spot. That was so awesome. Absolutely. Mm. Okay, so okay. we're just going to get this ready. I'm going to put this up what here. This? What is this? What, yeah, yeah. What, what, what are you? Watch and see. Here we go. No, oh, no. Oh! What? She's swallowing a sword. That's gonna hurt. Oh, I can't believe what I'm seeing. What? 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 And oh. we're through with that one. <laughs> All right, now, John, take this lighter and light this for me. Oh. All right. Whoa. Okay. No. Yes. Oh, that's incredible! Amazing! Oh, breathtaking! So big! <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you for having me on your little show. No, 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 no. Thank, you. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you so much. Our audience has never seen anything like that. It was my pleasure. 
Oh, let me get your hat. Oh, let yes, your hat. my hat yeah. and not my bag. Sure, sure. There's your hat. And let me get your bag here. Oh, that's perfect. That's thank perfect. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. So oh, that was so great. <laughs> thank you. See you later. Oh, it was magnificent. <laughs> oh, I like it. I like your <laughs> style. <laughs> wow. Yeah. How do we top that? It's Bible story time with Kellen. Kellen! How's it going, Kellen? Great! Um, why is there a giant bag of trash on the desk? Uh, we don't know. Yeah, no idea how it got here. Hey, but more importantly, did you know who we just had on the show? Yeah, I was watching. I think it was Miss Magnificent. Wasn't she incredible? I don't know. Actually, no one can see her because there was a giant bag of trash blocking her. No, no, they were able to see her. I mean, uh, yeah, surely they were, they were, uh, I mean, Steve, you were, you were able to see her, right? A, a cookie? Yeah, but Jason, you were able to. This is all your fault. My if you fault. hadn't thrown one, I told you, needed to throw, you, you at told the me beginning what? of the show. Told me I what? said there was trash on the desk. This is not I my trash, trash. Brandon. Brandon. This is guys. It was your desk. Hey, hey, guys. What? I think I got a story that can help us out. Oh, then by all means, take it away, Kellen. Gladly. Our story today is from the book of Nehemiah. In fact, we're going to be talking about Nehemiah all month long. So here to help me tell the beginning of his story are... The so-and-so show players. <laughs> Nehemiah was the king's wine taster. Oh, king Artaxerxes, this is good. I can smell hints of fig. Oh, and that was cherry. Oh, hmm. Hmm. Burnt camel hair. Oh, that is wonderful. Yeah. You're smelling that. Can you taste it and check for poison? <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, that's my job. Wine All right. Wine <clears throat> All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, King. Excellent. That's just. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. Once again. Oh, Once I'm just again. kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh, man. You should have seen your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fine. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah, yeah just <laughs> bottoms up. Yeah. Nehemiah had been away from his home in Jerusalem for quite some time. So when his brother Hanani came to visit, Nehemiah asked him all about Jerusalem. Nehemiah! Hanani! Hey! <laughs> oh, it's good to see you. Yeah, good tell to see me, you. tell me. I, I want to hear about everything. Tell me how yeah. the people are back home in Judah. How's the city of Jerusalem? Yeah, oh, brother. Brother, brother, brother. The people are having a hard time. Uh, and what? Jerusalem. Oh, sweet Jerusalem. The walls of oh, Jerusalem. I love the they, walls. Of, they're huge! Yeah, they were. <laughs> huge, were, were. The walls have oh, come down. Yeah, the gates are burned with fire. Yep, 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 I got you, yep. When Nehemiah heard this, he wept for several days, and he didn't eat any food. <laughs> uh, you're out of strawberry. <laughs> Nope, nope. <laughs> I think you get the point. Nehemiah was sad, and he did something that's helpful to do when you're feeling sad. He prayed to God. Nehemiah praised God in his prayers. And he also admitted that he and his people, well, they kind of messed up, and they hadn't been following God. Also, in his prayers, Nehemiah asked God to give him success when he asks King Artaxerxes a really big favor. Ah, Nehemiah, mm. would you? That's good. Oh, what? Nehemiah, mm. well, you're sad. Why are you so sad? King, I may live forever, yep. but my city where my people of old have been buried, 
It's been destroyed. The city's destroyed and, and the walls and gates have been burned <laughs> well, with what fire. Terrible. What do you want? Nehemiah again prayed to God before he made his request of the king. If it please you, I would ask that you send me to Judah, to the city of Jerusalem, so that I can rebuild the wall. How long will it take? The king gave Nehemiah permission. And Nehemiah also asked the king to send along letters that would not only make sure he had a safe journey, but it would also help Nehemiah get access to logs he could use to rebuild part of the city wall. Artaxerxes gave him the letters and sent an army of officers with him for protection. After Nehemiah had been in Jerusalem for three days, he went out at night to check on the wall. He went through the valley gate toward the jackal well. Hey, whoa. The jackal well? That's what it says. All right. Let's go. And then he walked to the dung gate. Dung gate? Dung gate. It's right there in the Bible. You know what? This is wild. This is it's wild. Nehemiah saw that the entire wall had been destroyed. So he went back to speak with the priest and the officials of Jerusalem. Good. Are all the priests and the officials here? Yeah. Yeah. All right, good. Good. Who did you say this guy was? Mm. Uh, let's listen. Uh, let's listen. Hello. Mm. Mm. Sorry. Um. Hello, friends. We all know what kind of trouble that we are in right now. Jerusalem has been destroyed and our gates have been burned with fire. I know. It's, it's terrible. It is terrible. But there's, yes, it is. Uh, but listen, listen, please stop. Please stop. Thank you. <clears throat> we must try to... Nay. Nay, nay. We will rebuild the wall around Jerusalem. We will rebuild the wall. Yes, we can do that. My friends, listen. God has been gracious to me. God has helped me. And King Artaxerxes has given us supplies Supplies that will help us rebuild the wall right now. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So, so who is ready to get to work and rebuild the wall? Let's do it. Good. Excellent. Let's go. Let's go. To be continued. Thank you so much, so-and-so show players. Take a bow. Wow, great story, Kellen. Right? Back then, city walls protected people from enemies and wild animals. They were very important. So, Nehemiah was heartbroken to find out that the walls of Jerusalem were broken down. Hear me out. Now, it wasn't Nehemiah's fault that the walls were broken down. It wasn't his job to fix them. But after he talked with God, Nehemiah knew he had to do something. And he just did it. Yep. With God's help, Nehemiah got to work. He didn't wait for someone else to do what needed to be done. Huh. Yeah. You guys got it from here? Yeah, I think we do. Yeah, thanks, Kellen. Later, guys. See you next time. You know? Yeah. But first, reveal the question. What around you needs to be done? Great question. Sure is. Maybe you have a school project you've been putting off. Uh, or maybe you notice some dishes that need to be done, and even though they aren't yours, you wash them. Or maybe there's a giant bag of trash on your studio desk. And it's been there the whole show. It's not your trash. And it's not either of yours, but you realize it's there. And what needs to be done is you just need to throw, throw the, the trash, trash away. away. I see something else that needs to be done. Yeah. Trash can basketball? Absolutely. <laughs>
Hey, talk about it together. What around you needs to be done? And we'll see you next time on the So and So Show. You ready? Yeah, let's do this. All right. <laughs> Hit it. All right. Go. Oh, off the backboard. Oh, man. Maybe, 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 maybe you can do an assist instead. Okay, here we go. Alley-oop. Oh! Yeah. That's how you do it, chicken! I can't make a basket. I can't either. And I'm standing right next to it. Oh, all the confetti. Yes! Nice! I made one! You made a trash bag! Hey, come on, let's keep going! No, wait, that's not... What? Come no, on! No, no, no! Yeah! Oh, no, no, no. oh, that's good. All right, I think we're good. Yeah, this looks about normal. <laughs> Let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forget our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.